Okay, you awesome humans taking this ride while I'm building this NAS. Uh, what you're looking at here is just an Ubuntu OS. Um, it does have a project named Omacube on top. That's like this theming. And you should check out my other video where I cover Omacube. It's a pretty cool project. For this, we're only going to use two things. A web browser. This is Google Chrome. And we'll be using a terminal. So I'll be switching back and forth from these two. And what we need to do is get in front of our server. And so what we're going to use to do that is the Dell R320's iDRAC. And that stands for Integrated Dell Remote Access Controller. And it basically gives you all the functions of the server in a web GUI so you can do everything that you'd want to as if you were sitting in front of the server with a monitor and keyboard. We can launch a console and this will be our window into the server. This is like a monitor that's connected to the server. And we can go down here and we can do like power on off so we can turn the server on. Let's do that. Sometimes I have to send this command twice if it doesn't work the first time. I can hear the old server spinning up, so that's working. I'm going to open up a keyboard because I need to press F2. We're going to be installing Proxmox on the server as the base OS, and then we'll be installing TrueNAS on top of that with PCIe pass-through of the Perk H310 Mini RAID card that controls our four 18 terabit hard drives, baby! Now, I've been working on this for like two days. It's given me hell. We're entering the R320's system setup. And I finally figured it out. I finally figured out exactly how to pass the PCIe uh, through to the VM and get it all working perfectly. The special sauce is that I needed to boot both Proxmox and the TrueNAS VM in UEFI mode. And me being an old Linux head, I'm not the best at UEFI mode, so <laughs> I had a bunch to learn. But we're gonna get there, baby! Sit down, have some fun, and take the ride with me as we set up the new 20 for beers NAS server, baby! The reasoning for putting Proxmox as the base OS is it will offer a failover for our main server that's running Proxmox for all of our production uh, VMs and containers, like the bulletin board, like all the tech heart websites. We'll set those up in a cluster, and if any VMs fail on the first server, they'll spin right up on the Dell R320 in an emergency, and we'll keep going, baby. No downtime. All right, so I'm going to jump in system bias and just make sure that UEFI is turned on. I've already turned on all the uh, virtualization stuff. Um, where's that going to be? Boot settings? Okay, yeah, I have it set to UEFI right here. And I think this is all fine. I mean, I'll select it when I get in there, so we're good. Um, as stated, I have virtualization enabled already. So we're good there, guys. We're ready to rock, man. Uh, next step, we're going to reboot this R320, and I have a USB stick inserted with Proxmox ISOs, and it's, it's a Ventoy disk, so it has a lot of ISOs. But we're going to boot into the Proxmox installer, so let's go! Okay, I hear it spinning up, so I'll probably have to open up this terminal again. It's a little funky, but we're alright. Uh, this time on the keyboard, I'm looking for F11 to jump into the BIOS settings so I can select my USB stick. By the way, another video to check out. If you guys like the Grub themes that you're going to see here in a minute, I'm using them in Ventoy. They're the DeadSec Grub themes. They're really cool, and I'll flash a link on screen. If you use Grub in Linux, it's a set of like 10 different themes you can select, and they're really cool. I think you should have a look because I like them, and I think you're going to too. Oh, dudes, we're going to have like 72 terabytes of hard drives in a minute, baby. Well, more like an hour, but you know. There are our four non-RAID 18 terabyte drives. We're going to pass that through to the TrueNAS VM later. Oh, man, it took a lot to figure all this out, I tell you. It wasn't easy, baby. Many TrueNAS installer fails because it didn't like the QEMU hard disk. TrueNAS prefers to be installed on bare metal, but we could jimmy it in, baby. All right, let's go to the UAFI boot menu. And we want this USB disk. I could explain a little bit. What's installed on the server is a one terabyte SSD that we're going to install Proxmox to. Four 18 terabyte hard drives. And we got that USB stick in there right now. I'm just going to go down here to Proxmox. And you can see here that Grub theme I was talking about. There's like 10 other ones you can pick. So I'm booting into Proxmox. Do you have a Proxmox server? The PCI pass-through isn't like an easy GUI thing. You just can't like select a menu option. You have to like jimmy it in there with all these comp files. And you're going to see all that happen, baby. 
I want to try to use the IP uh, 10.0.0.101. Why? Because I like it. That's why. I might have to reconnect this terminal again. The console does reset every time there's like a reboot or something. So hopefully, we're in. Okay, so we're going to accept the EULA. We're getting EULA Roofy. Did you read that? I didn't. Uh-oh. And down here, we're going to select our one terabyte SSD. But we can see down here all the 18 terabyte hard disks. There they are. One, two, three, four. Oh. Now I'm just going to let it install a ZXT4 so I don't need to do any of the other options. I haven't installed Proxmox on ZFS or XFS. Has anybody else? All right, we'll select our time zone. That's Los Angeles. I must have passed it. Where's it at? Right there, baby. Los Angeles. <laughs> Give it a password of, you know, password. And an email of Polly at Gmail, baby. Okay, this is all fine, except I'm gonna change PVE for the host name to PVE2, because this is gonna be the second Proxmox in our network. It wants to give me 102, but I think 101 is open, so I'm gonna put 101. I had it installed just a minute ago on 101, so I, I think 101's open, and we'll automatically reboot after the installation. Now, this is gonna take a while, but the magic of video editing will be back just in a couple seconds. Boom! All right, baby, we're done. So I'm gonna reboot. It might have already rebooted itself. Uh, so Proxmox is now installed on our SSD. It's going to reboot. And once that's complete, this console will break again, but then it will be available in the web GUI at 10.00.101 port 8006. So I'll let the server boot up and then we'll jump into the Proxmox GUI over here. Oh boy. What do y'all think about this iDRAC? This one is unique. On my other server, there's a dedicated NIC for iDRAC 8. On this one, it just works like through the main NIC of the server. There's not a dedicated port. But I think it's really cool. You can get in all the server information from settings to all of your hardware. And I think it's pretty fresh, man. I'm really a fan of the Dell PowerEdge line of servers. It's all I've ran, but I did play around with some HP ProLiance and I really, really like the Dells. They fresh. And here we can see that Proxmox is up and running. So I'm going to now close the console to the server. And we'll open up a new browser. And we'll go to that 10.101 uh, port 8006. We'll have to select advanced and allow it. And look at this, baby. We're into our Proxmox install. How cool is this, man? I love it. Okay, now, do you see that nag that just popped up? This is because we don't pay for Proxmox. We're going to use the community version. So let me show you a really cool uh, tool that you can use. Search for Proxmox helper scripts. And this is a really cool project that gives you many Proxmox helper scripts that can install OSs or containers or all sorts of different stuff. Uh, but we're just gonna use the PVE tools and I'm looking for the post install script. What this will do is it'll go through and correct all of our repositories, update the system, blah, blah, blah. Uh, one mistake I first made when using these uh, PVE helper scripts is I was trying to run them while SSH'd into the Proxmox box, and that's not how they work. You must go through your node and the shell. Let's get some more room. All right, we'll paste in that command and let's run it. It brings up the script and it'll do everything for us. So let's run the post install script. The package manager will use correct sources to update and install packages on our PVE. Yes, PVE enterprise repository is only available to users who have purchased a PVE subscription. So let's disable that. Yes, we're going to enable the PVE no subscription repo. Yes, correct Ceph sources. Yes, let's do that. Uh, I do not want PVE test. I just want a nice stable Proxmox. I don't need any of the test packages. And we will disable the subscription nag so that little pop-up doesn't show up anymore. Always support your Proxmox VE helper scripts project. I have not done that yet and I probably need to. I'm gonna disable high availability right now, even though later I'm going to set that up when I make a, a Proxmox cluster out of my two servers. But for now, I'll just leave it disabled. And let's let this update the entire system and I'll be back with y'all in a little bit. Oh, <laughs> doing things. Yes to update and I'll flash back with the magic of video. All right, so it wants us to reboot Proxmox and I'll also do that and I'll catch y'all right back on the flip. It's gonna take my server two minutes, but you'll be right back.
All right, baby, we're back. What do we have here? We have Proxmox installed on our server. First things first, let's check what that helper script did for us. Let's go down here to update. Maybe it's in PVE. Yeah, update, here we go, updates and repositories. We already ran the update. I just wanna make sure that Ceph uh, repo is out and looks like it is. Yeah, the Ceph Quincy ones are down here and they're out, so that's good. Let's go look at our storage in data center storage, we can see we have our one terabyte SSD in local LVM storage, but we don't have any like ISOs. I have another NFS server that I have all my ISOs on. So let's add an NFS. We'll ID it as ISOs. Uh, the current NFS server that we are actually replacing is there. And the export directory is uh, Proxmox ISOs. I think it's just like that. Uh, that should add, let me add here though, ISO images, so it'll hold disk images or ISO images. And let's add that. Oh yeah, nice and sleazy. And let's also add another server that I have, a Proxmox backup server. This will later allow us to back up any VMs that we have on here. Um, that one's gonna be at uh, 10.0.0.249, there we go. And it's root at PAM for the user and my password, password. We also have to add a fingerprint, which I've already copied. So I'll just paste that and you won't see this because no. The data store is named PBS underscore backup and that should be good. Let's add our PBS. Boom! So now we have ISOs that we can pull from to install VMs with and we have our Proxmox backup server that I'll use later to back up those VMs. Um, so let's first install TrueNAS scale and then later we'll work on the PCI pass through. So let's create a VM. We're gonna name that sucker TrueNAS scale. Pull up our advanced options. I'm not gonna select start at boot now. I'll do so later, but for now I'm gonna leave it alone. See here, we're pulling from that storage ISOs. So I will see ISOs that are on that other server in my house. I'll select TrueNAS scale and we can go next. On the system, I'm gonna change from a i440FX to a Q35 machine. It gives better hardware level support. We're also gonna select UEFI. And for the UEFI disk, I'm gonna put that on the SSD, local LVM. Boom! Later, I'll add the QEMU agent so that the VM can talk to Proxmox, but I'm gonna leave it off for now. So now for the TrueNAS disk, the hard disk, I'm gonna keep that on local LVM, so the SSD. 32 gigabytes is fine. I'm gonna select SSD emulation because our hard drive is an SSD and I'll select discard. This like, I don't really know how it does it, but it allows data to be deleted when you delete data from the TrueNAS. Somebody told me to do it, all right? Click discard. For our CPU, I'm gonna pass through all 12 cores and for the type, I'm gonna select host so the VM has the most access at the hardware level to our 12 cores. Oh boy. All right, memory. I currently have 24 gigabytes in this server. We're ordering another 128 gigabytes, so I'll change this later. And since the main function of this server is the TrueNAS scale, I'm gonna put 22 gigabytes right to this VM. We can change that later if needed, but 22 gigabytes. And also, since we're gonna be doing PCI pass-through, we need to deselect ballooning device because somebody on the interwebs told me I had to or else I'll hit issues, so just forget about it next. Network's fine, boom, boom, boom. Let's create that VN, dog. Oh, we're getting there. <laughs> All right, so let's boot this TrueNAS VM. I'll double click it to open a console. We have to get into the BIOS. So I'm gonna press escape when I push start. I had so many failures on previous install attempts. When booting in BIOS mode in the TrueNAS VM, it would fail to install. Then I tried another time and I did the PCI pass through first and I could see all the 18 terabyte disks, but the installer failed. I finally figured it out. Uh, let's go to device manager and secure boot and we're gonna turn off secure boot. Now we'll press F10 to save that. And this is one thing I was weirded out about. You see how it says current secure boot state enabled? Well, at the next boot, it'll be disabled. So you can exit out of there and click reset. I'm gonna press escape just again to show you that. And you'll now notice if I go to the device manager and secure boot, that it is disabled. So let's get out of there. We'll reset and this will boot the TrueNAS installer. Oh, we're doing things, baby. Can you guys tell I love this? I love this, I love it. Do you love it? You're a nerd, me too. Oh, let's go. Those PCI uh, HP registers failures are okay. I forget what ChatGPT told me, but all that is fine. Just uh, ignore it. You didn't see nothing here. Moving along. Okay, click install. We'll select the only 32 gigabyte QEMU hard disk. We'll say yes. I'll make an admin account. 
Actually, this is so stupid. I'm not gonna make an admin account, but the only reason is uh, that's how it worked last time. So I'm just gonna do everything exactly the same. I'll configure it in the web UI afterwards. Now the installer would fail right here when it tried to write these first partitions, but look at that, baby. Oh, we're good. Magic of video, I'll catch you back when this is done. Another five minutes, one, two, three, go. We're sorry, you have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number and try your call again. Oh baby, baby, the TrueNAS installation succeeded. I didn't get the tempo right, but that's okay. We're gonna shut down. Let's shut down the system, yeah. All right, I'm gonna close that terminal. Uh, I gotta go to hardware and remove the ISO. We don't need that anymore. Uh, so what do we have? We have TrueNAS scale installed. We could boot it and see. You wanna do that real quick? I'll do video editing and it'll be fast. I'm gonna boot the TrueNAS scale VM and in one second, I'll show you that it's up. Bada bing, baby. Now with the TrueNAS VM booted, we have a uh, 10.00.118, so we can close this console and let's pull that sucker up. We'll go to 10.0.0.118, was that right? And now we'll have to make an administrator account. Boom, baby. And look at that. We now have a TrueNAS VM running on top of our Proxmox. We'll look at storage real quick and disks. And we will notice that the only disk is the QEMU hard drive, 32 gigabytes. Well, that's a problem, right? It is for now. Let's shut down the TrueNAS VM. So we'll shut down this sucker. Oh boy, we're getting closer and closer. <laughs> To make the next steps easier, we have to set up PCIe pass-through. Using the terminal would be a lot easier. So, how am I gonna do that? We can go to the PVE shell, the Proxmox shell. We're gonna need to make a user. Let me clear the screen. Let's try the add user command, and I'll create Pauly. And look at that, we have a Pauly account. Um, let's also install apt install sudo so that we have sudo. We want Polly to be an admin user. Now let's do a group mod. Is that the command group mod? Group mod dash lowercase a dash g. The sudo group for user Polly420. Oh, right, right, right. User mod dash a capital G sudo group for user Polly. There we go. Now we can sue into the Polly user. Um, we'll go home and we can do sudo ls to test sudo out, and that works. Okay, now we're in the poly user. Let's do an ssh uh, key gen. Oh, I'm gonna set up ssh keys, baby. There we go, and I'll clear the screen. I'm gonna add some ssh keys. One is gonna be for this YouTube you know, testing laptop, and the other is for my main laptop. Um, I'll hide those on screen, but let me add those really quick, and then we'll do a vim, dot ssh authorized keys there we go and we're going to do one for the youtube test laptop oma cube and i'll paste that in we'll hide it from you and then this one is for my arch framework laptop on 705 and i'll paste that in there boom so now i have ssh access from this test laptop and my actual laptop we can try that out, SSH, poly at 101. And Bob's your uncle. Now we have terminal access to our Proxmox install. Are y'all following along? Man, are you guys getting it? Whoa, doing things around here. All right. Now we're gonna set up PCI pass-through on the Proxmox host. Server, host, OS, pro you know, Proxmox, whatever. Let's do sudo vim, etc. cetera, uh, kernel, and cmd line. Inside of that, we're gonna put Intel underscore IOMMU equals on, and that's for virtualization. We'll save that, boom, and we're gonna run sudo proxmox uh, boot tool refresh. Okay, so that sets up virtualization on the host uh, when we boot. All right, getting things done. Now we have to add some kernel modules, so we'll edit, etc. Modules, and we're gonna add down here VFIO, and then a few VFIO parts. IOMMU underscore type one, boom. Then PCI, 
and then VFIO uh, vert vert no vert vert FD vert yeah okay yeah so we're adding these kernel modules VFIO VFIO IO MMU type one PCI and vert FD baby let's save that file uh oh bang now we have to go to etc mod probe and we're going to add several things the first file that we're going to edit is io mmu unsafe interrupts dot conf and inside of here we're going to put options vfio underscore io mmu underscore type one allow unsafe interrupts equals one we're going to save that then we're going to edit another file called kvm.conf and inside of here it's going to be options kvm ignore msrs equals one the next file is blacklist and we're going to type blacklist uh, mega raid underscore sass what that does is it's going to blacklist our perk h310 mini card uh, to the proxmox the, the host os because we're going to pass this mega raid card through to our true nas vm so we want to blacklist it from proxmox so it's mega raid underscore sass now if you're wondering how i figured that out or how i know that we can run a command called lspci dash n dash s then the location and get the information for our integrated raid card right and way down here you can see that it's mega raid sas it's currently using the mega raid sas kernel but we want it to use the vfio kernel so that's what that blacklist file was all about we also want to take note of this uh location i don't know if it's called a location or like a it's like the id of this card and we want to edit the vfio.conf again and then here we want options vfio pci ids equals 100073 uh, that's the location of that card we just stated so we're going to load that card with the kernel module vfio pci matches up with this did i get it right options vfio pci IDs equals 1000 colon 0073. <laughs> uh, after all those, we're going to have to do a sudo update init ram fs uh, dash u and then proxmox likes dash k all. <laughs> Making the magic happen, baby. <laughs> I love it. It took me two days to figure this out. Trust me. Are we having fun yet? I'm having fun. Oh, boy. Okay, with that finished, we're gonna reboot our Proxmox server. So I'm gonna launch our server console just so we can see the reboot. There's that, and I can jump over to our console. We're SSH into Proxmox, and we can do sudo reboot now. And that should reboot our server. And hopefully after this reboot, PCIe pass-through will be working. We just have to add it to the VM. Okay, Proxmox is rebooted. So I can close that down. Our Proxmox GUI should reload, and it does. We can go back over here clear we'll ssh back in to our proxmox server and now we have a true nas server with only one disk but our pci pass through should be working so let's go to the true nas scale vm's hardware and we're going to add a pci device baby we're doing it raw raw dog in this device we're gonna go right down here to broadcom lsi the mega raid sas select that and then we're going to select all functions and pci express guys boom we can do a couple tests. Over on the Proxmox server, we can run an lspci-nnk and we'll grep out uh, dash a301 colon 00.0. Oops, gotta put the right command in. Again, <laughs> lspci. And we'll see our RAID uh, controller. And down here, if we look at the kernel driver in use, it's using VFIO PCI. That's what we changed. So that looks correct. We could also check for any errors by running D message. And we're gonna grep out uh, dash I VFIO. No problems there. And we can do sudo journal CTL uh, dash XE grep dash i vfio and no errors there i see it is using the vfio pci kernel just like we want so what this means is if the stars align and we run this true nas scale vm our 18 terabit hard disks should be available is this gonna work let's run it <laughs>
Uh, one other thing we can do while that is booting, we can switch over to our terminal and we can go over to etc. PVE QEMU server. I'll have to sue into root and let's cat our config file. This is for the TrueNAS VM and we can see it added host PCI zero and the location that is our raid card. So hopefully that's going to go over here, baby. I also like to do this. I like to copy um, our comp file to a backup file um, just for future. If we ever change our VM, this is the known working hopefully setup. All right, so I'm gonna let that boot finish up and then we'll check it out. Oh, these drives are gonna be available, man. 418 TBs, let's go! Okay guys, the time has come. TrueNAS scale is booted up. We can go over to our web browser and we're gonna type in, well, we don't have to type in, we can just reload. Let's log in as our admin user. Let's see, are these drives gonna be available? What do you think? What's the high-low? Oh look, I already see them! Boom! There's our four 18 terabyte hard disks. Success! <laughs> I'm super happy because this literally took, I mean, I, we could even say 48 hours, but there was a lot of testing. I have video for it, but I just thought I'd include the special sauce. But yeah, we're here, man. Boom! So this is going to be my setup, guys. We have Proxmox installed on the Dell R320. We currently have a CPU in the Dell R320 that has 11, 12 cores, I'm sorry. I ordered the fastest CPU, and that comes in tomorrow. You're going to see video here in a minute, but let's try to create the pool. I'm not going to share creating the data sets because that has permissions and everything else, but let's create this data pool out of our drives. Oh man, I'm stoked. So we're going to click create pool. Let's name this pool. It's going to be Speaker Office. Now, that's what my last NAS is named. I won't go into why, but Speaker Office. We'll do encryption. AES-256, and I'm going to download the key, but I'm not going to share that with y'all. We can click Next and scroll down here. We can click Next. Uh, the layout for us, we're going to make a RAID Z1. What that means is, out of our four 18 terabyte drives, one of them will be for parity or redundancy, whatever it is, we lose one drive. So we're going to have three times 18 terabytes available data to write to, but any one of those drives can fail and we won't lose any data. So we're going to make a pool of four drives in a RAID Z1. We got to select our disks. Now, I only see one here. How do I select more than one? Manual disk selection, maybe? Let's see. I don't know where to put these. Okay, we're going to click Add. We have a RAID Z1 up here. Um, let's get our four 16 terabyte drives. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. So SDB, CD, and E. We'll save that. Okay, that's going to create one VDEV. So we're creating a pool with one VDEV of four drives in a ZFS1. We'll click next. We're not going to select any of these other disks for log, cache, spare. We might add those later. On this server, I do have another SATA port on the motherboard that I could add four drives to. But for now, we're going to pass all this off to RAM. And as I stated earlier, we're ordering 128 gigabytes of RAM. We'll see how that runs and we'll add disks as needed for these other options, log, spare, cache, metadata, and deduplication. So to review, we have a pool name, speaker office. We have encryption, baby. It has four disks. The estimated usable raw capacity is 49.8. 11 terabytes it's actually 52 terabytes but you know how that conversion works in linux yeah we get screwed let's create this pool guys boom contents of all added disks will be i'm so i am so stoked it's because of you guys that we have these disks man and let's create this sucker 20 for beers <laughs> Thanks to all the people that participated in the fundraiser. It was awesome. And I thank each and every one of you, especially the two angels, Worson and Figment. Thank you. I appreciate y'all and the other 10 participants. You freaking rock! And actually, let's call them guys out. You ready? Thank you, Kirk Sprague, N2QFD, Unix Lord, Fulton, Mike the Mac, Slacker, Cosmo, G.N, I need your handle, Poindexter Fortran, Figment, A.C, handle please, and the aforementioned Warson, Giggity Gangsters. Now I'm going to download the encryption key, but I'm not going to share that with you, and I've got them, so I'll click done, and dudes, are you 
flipping ready. We have a pool, a VDEV of four wide 18 terabit drives, baby. Now I believe in the background, this is gonna begin to create that pool. My next steps are I'm gonna create data sets. They'll be like child directories or child data sets off the main speaker office pool. I can add either ZVols or data sets. Data sets are gonna be like hard disks where I can have permissions just like Linux or you can do Windows SMB. And those will just be like, you know, like disks. Like I'm gonna have one for backup four TVs. That's one hard drive that I currently have in my NFS. I'm gonna have another one called beers four TB and another one called backup six TB. We can also add ZVols and that means you specify a certain amount of data as like, I think a raw storage device, but it can be used by uh, TrueNAS scale VMs or virtual machines. I'm not gonna use many of those. This is mainly just gonna be a NAS, right around 52 terabytes, even though it only shows 47.44 available. That's what we're gonna build, man. And you guys did that. And I flippin' appreciate it. Boom! Another thing that I missed. You guys wanna hang along for the ride? I'm gonna switch over to my terminal. Now I'm in the Proxmox, so I'm directly on the server OS. I forgot to sudo vim, etc. SSH, sshd config, because we have to turn off passwords so that nobody can log in unless they have this key. Permit root login? Of course not. Go down a little more. Password authentication and permit empty passwords. Those both need to be no. Okay, and if I save that, and then I do a sudo systemctl uh, restart sshd, now I can only log in with a key, no passwords allowed. We did a lot tonight. It took me a long time to figure out exactly how to get this worked in. Please write in the comments below if you agree or disagree with any of my setup choices. We got it. We're doing things. Big Pippin. Oh, 20 for beers, baby. This is where all your files are going to be downloaded from. Well, there'll be data sets underneath here. Oh, man, I love you guys. I love y'all. I love you. Do you love me? I love you. Uh, back at you. Woo! All right, so last night in the mail, we received a new Xeon E5 2470 version 2 CPU. That's the fastest CPU that the Dell R320 can take. Uh, so let's... uh. Pop the old one out and get the new one in. Shall we? We're going from 12 threads to 20, baby. just about done and we can button up our machine and test out the new CPU baby ten gigabit Nick card We're gonna go make sure that shows up. In All right, and here we are back on the main PVE Proxmox system. Let's go click on network now. And look at that. We can see our 10 gigabit device. Speeds are about to get quick, baby. Oh, ho, ho. do you feel it? I feel it. All right, go on with your bad self. We're gonna open up the cloudninjas.com memory. I've got to say, I'm really impressed with the packaging. I'll open it up.
There's even more bubble wrap on top. And there's our four 32 gigabit sticks. Looks very nice. Comes in a super professional memory holder that I'm gonna keep and reuse in the future. So cloudninjas.com, I'm gonna give them a big old thumbs up. Now let's get it thrown into the server, shall we? All right, rock stars. Hey, before we get going with the RAM, let's show you some of the fine folks from our fundraiser, shall we? I can pull out these drives. Ooh, this was an angel. Warson, that was an angel donation. One whole drive there, Warson. What a rock star. Drive number two. Oh boy, another angel figment. Booyah. This one, we got Kirk Sprague, N2QFD, Unix Lord, Fulton, and Mike the Mac. Fundraiser 2024, baby. Oh yeah, Slacker, Cosmo, Poindexter, Fortran, boom. So we're trying to remember all the people that helped with this fundraiser. And there was many more, 16 to be exact, that we'll display. But for now, baby, let's get this memory installed. We've got three sticks of eight gigabyte memory in there. They're installed in A1, A2, and A3. So I'm gonna get all this uninstalled. Have to open up every bank. Whoops, don't shoot it to the moon. Okay. If I maybe just move these over a little bit, get them a little closer to each other, that'll give me somewhere to throw one of these. I think I can just move this uh, down here and I'll install the first two eight gigabyte sticks. Those both installed. And now I'll start with the 32 gigabits. Make sure I get them the right way here. There we go, that's right. Here we go. So that's 64 gigabits. There we go. So that leaves us with 128 gigabits and another 16. And that last stick I can just leave right here in their case. Uh, let's check this memory tab again and see if it's changed. Yeah, look at this. A1 and 2 are 32 gigabits. A4 and 5 are 32 gigabits. A3 and A6 are 8 gigabits. But they are showing at 1066 megahertz. We're going to have to figure that out. The RAM that I ordered was Samsung M39 before blah, 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 32 gigabyte sticks. So I'm going to leave you with that. But I want to make sure that I thank the 20 for Beers community for making this NAS build a possibility. The names of the people scrolling by are all greatly appreciated. And we were able to build a NAS that I think is going to serve the 20 for Beers BBS for years to come. If you don't know what BBSs are, check out this other video where I break it down for you. Tech Heart out.